ISO produces several different types of publications, also referred to as deliverables. This e-learning module explains the differences between these available deliverables and how a committee can choose the appropriate one for their content. Today we will focus mainly on international standards, technical specifications, publicly available specifications, and technical reports. We will also talk briefly about guides and international workshop agreements. As we get into further detail about each deliverable type, let's first make a distinction between normative and informative documents. International Standards IS, Technical Specifications TS, and Publicly Available Specifications PAS are considered normative deliverables. These are documents that can contain requirements, recommendations, permissions, possibilities, and capabilities. Requirements are statements that use shall and shall not. Recommendations use should and should not. Permissions use may and may not. And possibilities and capabilities use can and cannot. It's worth mentioning here that a document that only uses recommendations, typically known as guidelines or guidance, is also considered a normative document, whether it's in the form of an international standard, technical specification, or publicly available specification. To initiate work for one of these normative deliverables, a new project ballot, also known as the NP ballot, using the Form 4 is required. This applies to a brand new proposal or to a revision of an existing publication where a scope expansion is requested. For revisions of a normative deliverable where the scope is not expanded, a committee resolution is sufficient to move forward. Normative documents also have to be developed within 18, 24, 36, or 48 months. Please note, however, that starting in May 2020, the 48-month development time frame will not be available. While the international standard, technical specification, and publicly available specifications are all normative documents, they are rather different when it comes to consensus, approval criteria, and shelf life. Let's focus on international standards for a moment. These documents require the highest level of consensus for publication. This means when a draft developed by a committee is mature enough for review, the draft international standard text will be released to all ISO member bodies, not just the members of a committee. For the DIS text to be approved, the criteria calls for a two-thirds majority approval of P members voting and no more than 25% disapproval of all votes cast. Please note that abstentions do not count toward the approval criteria. International standards have no lifetime limitation. However, the IS deliverable has to be reviewed at least every five years to make sure the content is still relevant and up to date. This is done by an automated systematic review ballot. Technical specifications, also known as TSs, have the same initiation and timeframes available but require a lower level of consensus. The draft technical specification, or DTS, is only subject to a vote by committee members and just requires a two-thirds majority of P members voting for publication. Technical specifications also have no lifetime limitations, but they have to be reviewed every three years. ISO recommends TSs to have a maximum shelf life of six years as it should be the goal of a committee to eventually convert the TS into a full international standard. Technical specifications also go through an automated systematic review ballot every three years. Publicly available specifications, also called PASs, have the same initiation and timeframes available while having the lowest threshold for consensus. PAS deliverables are only balloted among committee members and just need a simple majority to be approved for publication. A PAS is valid for three years and can be extended to a six-year maximum shelf life. After the six-year limit has been reached, a committee can either withdraw the PAS or convert it into a technical specification or international standard. Publicly available specifications are also part of the automated systematic review process. 
There are numerous factors a committee has to consider when deciding to develop a PAS, a TS, or an IS. Sometimes new projects can benefit from starting as a lower consensus deliverable such as a technical specification, especially in cases where a proposal is new to the market or the industry is not yet ready for a full international standard and will need time to adapt to the new requirements or if there is an urgent market need. Seeking consensus from just the committee members in the case of a technical specification allows a project to be published more quickly. There are also times when projects intended to become international standards face many challenges to reach a satisfactory consensus during the development phase. Changing the deliverable from an international standard to a technical specification is a handy option to ensure a committee's project gets published. This allows the market to test the new publication and, as you have already learned, normally after six years, the TS can be reviewed and possibly converted into an international standard or be withdrawn. Conversion of deliverables from one type to another in the example we have just described is generally possible. For example, a conversion from a PAS to a TS or IS, or a conversion from a TS to an IS is quite simple. A given committee would usually pass a resolution for the intended deliverable change and start a DIS ballot for a conversion to an IS and a DTS ballot for a conversion to a TS. If a scope of a publication has to be expanded as part of a conversion or upgrade, an NP ballot using the Form 4 is required. Now that we have covered the various types of normative documents, we can move on to discuss the features of informative publications and technical reports in particular. Unlike the PAS, TS, and IS, technical reports contain no requirements. TRs instead contain information which may include data obtained from a survey or from an informative report or information of the perceived state of the art. A technical report can also be a collection of data such as comparisons between different practices, methods and standards, or test results. TRs do not need a Form 4 new project proposal to be started. A committee resolution is sufficient. While technical reports do not have a restricted development time frame, they should take no longer than three years to produce. The consensus level for technical reports is the same as a PAS. Only committee members review the draft and approve the publication of the TR, which can be achieved with a simple majority. Technical reports are considered to be a static deliverable as they only contain information. They do not have a specific life limit. Furthermore, technical reports are not part of the systematic review process but still need to be reviewed by the committee on a regular basis to ensure the information is still correct and relevant. We recommend committees do this every five years. Please take special note that test methods and procedures are inappropriate content for a technical report. Also, vocabulary documents shall not be developed as technical reports, given the importance of a vocabulary and other ISO deliverables, for example, as a normative reference. Vocabularies need to be developed as technical specifications or international standards. It is still possible, however, to include terms and definitions in a technical report as long as they don't make up the entire document. And remember, a technical report does not contain any normative matter, meaning no requirements or recommendation statements as we have discussed earlier. Converting a TR into another deliverable is usually not possible, as the content is not likely suitable as a normative document type. Make sure you check with your technical program manager and editor if you consider such a conversion. Remember, technical reports cannot contain requirements or content that implies it's normative or contains recommendations. Here is a summary of all the deliverables we have described so far. Depending on the complexity of your document and the time and human resources available in your committee, you have several options to work with. While TR, PAS, TS, and IS are ISO's most common deliverable types, you may have also heard about guides and international workshop agreements. These do not fit into the categories we just discussed. 
guides, not to be confused with guidance or guidelines, can only be developed by ISO and IEC at an organizational level, not at a technical committee level. They are deliverables on matters to help committees develop standards. More information on guides can be found in Annex A of the ISO IEC Directives Part 1. An International Workshop Agreement, or an IWA, is a document developed outside the normal ISO committee system for market players to negotiate in an open workshop environment. International workshop agreements are typically administratively supported by a member body. The published agreement report includes a list of the participating organizations involved in its development. Also, an international workshop agreement has a maximum lifespan of six years, after which it can be either transformed into another ISO deliverable or is automatically withdrawn. More information on international workshop agreements can be found in Annex SI in ISO IEC Directives Part 1. To help choose the right deliverable for development, the following questions may help you. What is the purpose of your deliverable? What kind of content are you developing? Will you have requirements and recommendations? If so, then you'll need to choose a normative document such as a PAS, a TS, or an international standard. If you want to publish survey data or any data to support an IS or TS, then a technical report is the correct deliverable. Second, how quickly does the market need the content? Is this a first edition and you're not sure if the industry will fully support the document? If so, a technical specification may be a better choice than a PAS or an international standard. Third, how easy will it be to reach consensus? Can you foresee complicated discussions about specific requirements? Also, committees should double check that the content they want to produce is appropriate to be published as an ISO deliverable. Sometimes documents may be more appropriate for an internal committee use or made available on a committee website and not subject to multiple approval stages. We hope this module has clarified the differences between the deliverables available in the ISO system. Should you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact your technical program manager, the contact details of which can be found on ISO.org. Thank you.